Hello and good afternoon. My name is Adam Fowler and I'm going to take you through today taking a simple app and building a pipeline, not just to turn that app into a container, but also to build the container image in the first place from a base image on multiple base. So what is it we need to do as a developer? Well, as a developer, I don't particularly want to learn all the kind of low level Kubernetes infrastructure things. Uh, I want somebody else to do that, somebody else to worry about that. All I want to do is write applications and say, here's my app. Go run it in the cloud, I don't care. So what I'm going to show in today's demo is how to do that. So I've got my app here running already. So prove you see the time there, and it's a, obviously a highly mission critical app. Uh, you can see the time updating as I refresh the web page. Um, so that's great. So that's it running. But how do I get it from code all the way through a pipeline into a container image that's in a repository that I can then deploy? Well. What I'm doing is I'm using something called Concourse. So Concourse is an open source piece of software that we support in uh, VMware Technology Labs. Um, it's a open source continuous thing doer. It's basically a declarative approach to CI CD. Um, the great thing about it is you can set up your multiple resources. They could be Git sources, they could be container images, a whole variety of things, even files within Git repositories that might have you know, the, the valid versions of software you want running. And then you set up a job with, um, you know, sources and syncs, so get and puts, and tasks which take the gets and make the puts, basically. And then you can visualize them like this. So I have built a pipeline for doing this already. So here's part of my pipeline. I'll show you the full thing later. What this basically does is it relies on a set of uh, definition files for base images. And one of the definition files tells you how to build um, a Debian bullseye image with the right prerequisites on it to run a Flask based Python application. If you don't know what Flask is, it's basically a API within Python that lets you create RESTful APIs and web applications. I'm just using it for a REST API wrapper, really. So what this image will do is that will act as the base. So it's Debian Bullseye with enough things built into it to run a Flask application. But rather than write a Docker file that does this differently for every type of Flask application, I'm writing one Docker file to do that, to build my standard image, which is this Flask Debian Bullseye image. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking my app, in this case, just a, a demo Flask app, very simple API that you saw a moment ago, and taking that base image and merging them together to create my Flask app on Debian Bullseye. And then that can then be uploaded to a container registry. In this case, I've got a, a ladder set up. So that's what I'm doing today, and I'll step you through that in a moment. Where this ends up, though, and where some of these base images come from, is a private harbor repository that I've got. Make sure this is logged in, because it does have to log me out all the time. Okay, so in here, we see that I've got a variety of images. Uh, the ones I'm interested in, though, is my Flask base image and my Flask time API image. So that's the source image. So the first task generates this base image, and the second one generates uh, time API. And I'll go through more about versions and tags on those in a little bit. But once they're in here, what I can then do is in my Kubernetes environment, whoever's Kubernetes it is, I can point them to this repository and spin up an instance of that image. So great for CI CD, checking new versions of the app work, but also great if I've got a standard app I know worked with the previous version and I need to update the versions of Flask or the versions of Python or the version of the operating system I'm using because of some security issue. Validate that upgrade isn't going to break any of my that's basically what I'm doing. You can get very complex with Concourse as well to build this thing out. So this is Concourse's own pipeline written in Concourse, unsurprisingly. And this is live, right? You can go to this URL at any point you want and, and view this itself. What I'm going to do now, though, is just take you through this basic pipeline. So how do we define it to go and fetch this? How do we define it to go and use that effectively as a build pack, if you like, for generating this final application image? Well. What we do, if we nip into Visual Studio Code, I'll just show you the app to start with. The app's very, very simple. So the root slash time, it basically returns the current time in seconds. Um, and this basically says, okay, 
if I'm invoking this file as a main file rather than as an API file. I want you to go and use Flask to run this application, binding to all IP addresses because it's running in Kubernetes, which bind it to any interface we've been given, and taking in the port it's specified. If the port's not specified, then you use port 5000. And that's just a, a convenience factor more than anything. So that's my standard app. Um, but as an app developer, that's where I want to live. I want to live in here, I want to add new functions to it, and I want to spend all my time. I want to learn Kubernetes. So what I've got in my pipeline definition is a couple of different things in here. So the first thing I've got, got a job here, which is called Flask Debian Bullseye, as you saw from the previous image. I'm going to go fetch my base images repository, which is just a, a GitHub repository. I'll explain this later. Uh, and then the task is I basically going to run a task called registry image, a standard OCI uh, image build task. Uh, I want to take the base images repository, which I'll show you in a moment. And I want to output something called image. And I'm providing the context, which is effectively the folder it's working from, which is the same as but the Docker file, which I know from this particular Git repository lives under the folder Docker files flask base. This is the base image. And I'm providing um, the base image I want to base it on. So this is a standard Python image and the specific version of Debian Bullseye I want to uh, base it off of. So this is a versioned tag with a specific version there. Because I want to know the software that's running eventually exactly what version of everything's in there. The best way of doing that is to make sure that you're always specifying it and not allowing it to always update. So taking this repository with this Docker file uh, and this base image, what it spits out at the end of this, after it does an image build, is it spits out an image. And I take the tar file for that image and I basically update the uh, the image in the harbor repository. Oops. Start, isn't it? Your code. Okay, so let me go and uh, show you this Docker file, for example, first before we do anything else. So the base image Docker file is pretty straightforward, so base it on Python Slim unless we specify the argument base image. And then we have a two phase, so this is a multi stage build. So for the really super annoying problem with the Visual Studio Code there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that base image and I'm going to run this. I mentioned something earlier about knowing the exact version of things you're running. Don't worry about this. I'll, in a future video, I'm going to go into how you do software building materials, how you make sure you know exactly what versions of everything's running. That later. Um, so what I'm going to do first is update uh my dependencies and add in build essentials in GCC. That's because I need to compile some uh, native software as plugins for Flask. I then set up uh, the virtual env for Python, install the prerequisites for all my Flask apps because I've decided that I, as a DevOps person, I'm going to install the known good versions of Flask and all the dependencies that our team standardly use so that my developers don't have to worry about that. And then phase two is the run phase. We're not actually running anything in this particular uh, Docker file because this effectively is my mid-level image. So this is the output image. I'm just copying over some files which are effectively my virtual env um, and the app folder. There's nothing in it at the moment. Um, and then uh, set the uh, environment variable. That's effectively what's going on with that first Docker file. So after running this Docker file, what we end up with is this task here. So start with my base image description, which includes that Docker file. I build my OCI image, which then gives me a Python Flask base image for Debian Bullseye. And where that ends up is in Harbor. So start with my Flask base image. Oh, sorry, yeah, it generates my Flask base image. So what I'm going to do here is I have a look here and You'll see I've got multiple versions of this. That's because I'm building them for different base operating systems. I'll go for that in a moment. But here we see that this is the V1 Debian bullseye tag. So this is the, the base image that we're generating. 
we see we have 338 megs there. We see that we have some uh, vulnerabilities here. So this is a critical set of vulnerabilities. You'll notice that both the Debian and the Red Hat um, are at critical, whereas the Ubuntu and the SUSE ones are not. So this is a particularly interesting <laughs> set of builds, actually. Um, and in Harbor, you've got you know the Trivi uh, and the Claire scanners built in. And you see 775 of which and um, the 31 critical and 231 uh, high. Now, this may look particularly horrific, but this is actually very, very common. Okay, so um, be aware of that. You know, if, you're, if your developers are specifying um, these dependencies themselves, then you're relying on every individual developer to do this right. What we've done here is we've no, used known good versions of software that are very recent versions only a week or so old, yet, as you can see, there's hundreds of vulnerabilities. So imagine, you know, it's, it's difficult enough for a team with constant CICD building going on to manage this. Trying to expect your developers to do it is going to be very, very difficult. So you need some sort of automation there. But anyway, the long and short of it is that when we push our image, it goes to this tag, um, but we've got the same image name, but for different base images constantly built. And this is... Typically, if you go on Docker Hub, for example, and you look at the Python image, you'll see Python, you know, 3.7, but you'll see 3.7 on Debian Bullseye, 3.7 on Red Hat, etc. etc. See those base images. We're doing a similar thing here. Well, that's effectively built my base image for all Flask apps. I've now got this base image, and all my Flask developers, whether it's one development team or 100 development teams, can use that base image. They know they don't have to worry about it. If there's security involved, but it's my job as the DevOps manager to make sure that that's kept up to date and secure. And what it also means is if we need to push out a change, I don't have to go to all of my 100 developers and ask them each manually, oh, please, could you use these particular versions and rebuild your images at some point when you get around to it? I can just automate the hell out of this, change one version number and hit go. Okay, and we'll, we'll go into that more in a future version as well. At the moment, we've got a pretty hard coded pipeline to give you an, an idea of what's going on. So once we've got that base flask Debian bullseye image, what I then want to do is go and build out my actual app. So I've got this image here. I want to take that image as a base. I want to take my app and I want to push my app onto that image. And what I do here is I use my flask app Debian bullseye task. Okay, so here's the Docker file for taking the standard flask base image and building the app on top of that so you'll see here again i've got the base image specified as an argument i could override that but i'm not going to do that same with the app folder i could override that for the particular app i'm doing but i'm not i'm defaulting them to something sensible and all i'm basically doing is saying from base image set the work directory because i know that's the same across um my operating systems set the environment variable copy the app over and then run a command. So literally the only two things my developers have to do, and really they don't need to do that, is they have to provide a Docker file like this. But this is, you'll notice that although I've defaulted this, I could pass this in as a parameter. So really I've got one Docker file, which can take a variety of base Flask images, be they on Debian, Ubuntu, you know, Red Hat, EBI8, or SUSE, and I can apply um, a single build pack image like this to it for any of my Flask applications in my organization. That saves a dramatic amount of time when it comes to dockerizing the applications. Um, and effectively what this does is this just runs Flask app.py. So as long as all my apps have got app.py in, I can... Now what I'd normally do is I'd externalize this into a separate repository. I've not got doing that yet. Um, but let's have a look at what Concourse actually does to do that. So here's the original Flask Debian image um, that gets built. But here we're building the app image. We're using the Python Flask app as a source, but also the Python Flask base image. What I'm doing on this, though, is I'm saying skip download because I don't need uh, Concourse itself to download that image because it's quite, you know, hundreds of megabytes of files is a bit wasteful. But what this is basically saying is if this changes and you see it change, then uh, you need to kick off this pipeline again. The task that's actually going to fetch the image is again the registry image building task. And what that is doing is it's taking the Python Flask app um, and it's building an image. 
you'll notice that there's no input for the source image that's because it's specified within the docker file and because in the docker file i'm passing in this parameter so this is where i'm saying whatever my organization's base repository is in my example it's that shared one incidentally that shared one's public and you can use it yourself and i'm saying use the python fast base image for debian bullseye so that matches the name of the repository and the name of the version tag that was in harbor i'm specifying the docker file which is my flask or on base docker file and i'm copying the context from this source which is this git source here within and i'm taking the image that gets built and again i'm taking the tar file of that image and i'm uploading it this time to this particular source which as you've seen before if we go back to uh, harbor go into harbor when we go back here you'll see there's a python flask time api image and again unsurprisingly i've got several of those built the one we're interested in is the debian so the debian one here and as you can see there's 805 vulnerabilities instead of 750 which means it's found vulnerabilities not just in my images but in the apps deployed into those images so you can see the scanner really paying for itself there 30 uh, vulnerabilities in my app is deliberate <laughs> so that you can show this okay so that's deploying this one so that's great so we've now got a pipeline which can go through and kick all this off the way this works is you'll see these are green but when something changes it will you know, kick off this particular pipeline so i'll show how that works in a, in a different demo well, this is the Debian image, but what if I want to do this for a whole variety of things? Well, I could do the same thing for SUSE, specify a different source image for that, but in Python Flask app, the application is the same. And I can go around, I can say, well, actually, I'm interested in anything that's to do with Flask applications. We well, see here that we've built, you know, mid-level images for anything to do with Python Flask for Red Hat, UBI 8, Debian Bullseye, GC 15.3, and Ubuntu Jammy as well. Um, and we've applied this application to all of these base images to generate all of these target app images. So that's great. We've done something slightly different to Ubuntu. That's because for all of these operating systems, it's relatively straightforward to install Python and Flask, whereas Ubuntu needed an extra step. On the Ubuntu image, what I'm doing here is, again, I'm taking a very basic base image and applying kind of Python 3 to it, before I then run the applying Flask updates onto that image. There wasn't a source Python 3 image available for Ubuntu, and Ubuntu by default doesn't come with Python 3, whereas Red Hat UBI 8 and uh, SUSE uh, do. That doesn't mean they're better. It actually means they're potentially more vulnerable because there's more stuff running on the image, right? So, you know, swings and roundabouts. But what this does show is that you can take something, and if I click on all here, you can see all the dependencies here so as soon as you know a base image changes or one of these build pack changes or version of software changes that i want to use on my app changes the relevant steps will kick off in this particular process so hopefully that gives you a feel for what is possible in concourse to create an application what i do in follow-on videos is talk about a few different topics so i want to talk about a secure software supply chain the software bill of materials i also want to talk about doing this not just for flask python apps but also java apps net apps you know node.js apps as well um as well as the whole stack of an application because this just builds the rest api but what about the database image that sits behind the app and what about the react.js web front end and that so what we're going to do over the this series is modify this and show you different ways of doing CI CD to automate your apps to me mean that your developers never have to touch YAML, which let's face it, as a developer is definitely what we want to be doing. Hopefully you've enjoyed that today and I'll see you another time.